welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We are so pumped to be back here on the channel, guys, after that unexpected week off, which we truly apologize for. Got really, really sick, completely lost my voice, could not speak at all, so I wouldn't have been able to post content anyway. So this really is a true welcome back here to kick off the month of June that's going to really carry us all the way to the start of prediction season. Before we get to prediction season, which is the best time of year here at the Gridiron Expert, we decided we'd take a little bit of a look at some win totals, some preseason win totals for the Power Four conferences, kind of getting an idea of what people are expecting these teams to do this upcoming season. And of course, we'll tell you what they're going to do when prediction season launches here in just a few weeks. So welcome back, guys. We're so glad you could join us today, ready to break down the SEC win totals for 2024. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. We've got some exclusive content for you over on the gridironexpert.com, home of our expert picks, some of the best college football NFL spread picks in the entire country, beating out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last six years. And if you sign up for those guys, you're going to win big with us. You'll also gain access to, to some exclusive newsletter content that you won't find anywhere else. So go check it out. The links are down there. So is our mailing address. To send us some of your team's gear. We've got some SEC gear up here, including the two newcomers in Oklahoma and Texas, but we'd love to get some more. Send us your team's gear to be represented in every single video from now through the end of the year, we want you to become a part of our GE Nation. You can do that by, again, checking out everything down in the description below and subscribing to us right here on the channel. So let's not delay any further, guys. These are just win totals. Some of these win totals have changed and are changing uh, as we get closer to the start of the season. But we pull up the graphic here, and obviously it's no surprise to see the two highest win totals being Georgia and Texas. Uh, Georgia narrowly missing out on the college football playoff last year, but once again, the probably the heavy favorite to win the national championship this year or go to the national championship this year. They're at 10.5. Texas, who just missed out on the national championship game last year, losing to Washington in the playoff semifinal, also coming in at 10.5. And, and that might come as a surprise to see the Longhorns at such a high win total in their first year in the conference. But, you know... It, it, those are probably the top two teams in the conference this year. I don't think there's really much debating that. Based on what we saw last year, based on what we know these teams are bringing back this year, it's not a surprise to see them where they are. Georgia and Texas, though, do have some tough games. They do have to play each other. They do play each other in Austin later, I believe in October it is. Georgia also has to play at Alabama, at Ole Miss, and has a neutral site game against Clemson to open up the year. So a tough slate for the Bulldogs, where you know if you're going to take the over, they can only slip up one time. Texas, they've got to play Georgia, as we mentioned. They also have to go to Michigan, Texas A&M, and then that neutral site game against Oklahoma. So the Longhorns arguably have a, a as just as difficult, if not more difficult, schedule than Georgia. And I think you could argue that Texas, if there's a team that's going to slip up more than once, it might be the Longhorns. They might slip up to Georgia at home, and then, I mean, again, to hit that over, to hit that over 10.5, they could not slip up again. And that includes that road game in Ann Arbor against Michigan. So a tough slate for both of these teams. But the heavy favorites in the SEC, regardless. Then you got a lot of teams there at nine and a half. A lot of teams at nine and a half wins with their projected win totals. Alabama, LSU, Missouri, Ole Miss, uh, even even uh, Tennessee right now uh, is at eight and a half. But some have them up to nine and a half. Some books right now have them up to nine and a half. But you look at Alabama. That's an interesting team to me. That's one of the most interesting storylines in the country this year. First year under Kalen DeBoer. No more Nick Saban. A lot of question marks on both sides of the ball. How does Alabama navigate a schedule with road games at Wisconsin, at Tennessee, at LSU, at Oklahoma, uh, with new schemes, new players, new concepts? So much uncertainty with this program. And then a home game against Georgia as well. So Alabama going to have home field advantage, but... Right now, the early spread, Georgia's the favorite. Alabama is a home underdog against Georgia right now for that game in Tuscaloosa in September. So Alabama at 9.5, basically saying if you're taking the over, they've got to go at least 10-2. and two. Can they do that? Can they swing that with this uh, much difficult of a schedule? So I'm really intrigued there. LSU, same thing, opening up the season against USC. They have a really good home schedule. USC's in Vegas, but get to host Ole Miss, get to host Alabama, get to host Oklahoma. Arguably the toughest road game for LSU is on the road at Texas A&M. 
So, again, Death Valley, as we know, one of the most difficult places to play in the country. LSU is certainly a college football playoff contender this year, especially with that new 12-team format. The home slate going to be so, so key for them. Then you get to Missouri. I like this Missouri team a lot. This is the team that won 11 games last year, won the Cotton Bowl. Their win total set nine and a half, and it comes down to three games. Literally, if Missouri can just go one and two in these three games, they will hit their over at Texas A&M, at Alabama, and the home game against Oklahoma. The rest of the schedule is extremely favorable for the Tigers. So you just go one and two in the games that I just mentioned and take care of business in the other games like many people are expecting. They're at least 10-2. and two. They've hit their over, and they more than likely are going to the college football playoff as a two-loss team. I mean, again, 12-team format, you're going to see a couple two-loss teams slipping in there. So Missouri's got a really, really favorable schedule and a great chance to hit their over. And again, we're not projecting the records now, those predict- predictions are coming out very, very soon. All the more reason to subscribe and hit that notification button. But this is a team that's going to be very, very dangerous uh, and a team that, once again, can challenge for a double-digit win season after doing it last year. Same can be said for Ole Miss. The thing with Ole Miss, though, is their schedule is interesting how it lines up. They're a team that could very well start 6-0. and We saw this a couple years ago. Ole Miss gets out to a really fast start, gets in the top 10. They might be a preseason top 10 team anyways. But 6-0 start, but how they handle the back half of the schedule will define their season. The back half of their schedule includes games at LSU, home game against Oklahoma, at Arkansas, Georgia, at Florida. So some very difficult games in those final six games. 6-0 starts great, but can they navigate some of the tougher wins there? Can they beat LSU in Death Valley? Can they beat Georgia? If they lose both of those... That's two losses already. That means they have to win every other game just to hit their over. And honestly, for Ole Miss, considering everything that Lane Kiffin has brought into this program through the transfer portal and recruiting trail, uh, anything less than a 10-win season I think would be viewed as a bit of a disappointment. High expectation in Oxford this year. Everybody's going to be talking about them as an elite contender after the first half of the season, but it's that back half that's going to be the most important. Tennessee. Very high expectations in Knoxville once again. Their season, you'll get an idea of them early on when they play NC State at a neutral site and on the road at Oklahoma. How they fare in those couple games early on in September will kind of dictate the direction of the season the rest of the way because they still have to play Alabama. They still have to go to Georgia. I really think Tennessee could be favored in at least nine games this year. I really do. I could see them favored in at least nine. So they take care of business in those games, pull off one upset. Not only are they a double-digit win team, not only are they hitting their over, but this is the team that very well could challenge for a playoff spot. That's if everything kind of goes according to plan. That offense, though, going to be absolutely deadly in Knoxville. A&M, how about them? Year one under Mike Elko. You will know what Texas A&M is capable of after year uh, week one when they host Notre Dame. That week one game in College Station will give you a great idea of what this team is capable of with a first-year head coach and a lot of new players, a lot of new schemes. I like this A&M team a lot, though. I think they're kind of a sneaky, under-the-radar team. Elko's a heck of a coach. They've got a lot more talent than people realize. Open against Notre Dame at Florida, Arkansas, Missouri, LSU, at Auburn, Texas. Big home slate, though. Hosting Notre Dame, hosting Missouri, hosting LSU, hosting Texas. So some of their biggest games, some of the most difficult games, are going to be in College Station with the 12th man. That's going to be huge in terms of this team trying to hit their over and just trying to reach the expectations that they've had for many, many years but have failed to reach under Jimbo Fisher. Auburn, 7.5. To me, a little high. A team that went 6-7 and seven last year and still has quite a bit of questions on both sides of the ball. Setting it at 7.5 and, and saying, hey, I'm taking the over, you're basically saying Auburn goes at least 8-4. and four. I'm not saying they're not doing that, but it seems like a very high mark for the Tigers. A Tigers team that doesn't even have a home game in the month of October. They don't have a road game until week 6 and very well could start 4-0. and But then they've got to go to Georgia, to Missouri, to Kentucky, to Alabama. A lot of tough road games on the slate for the Tigers, and that's assuming they don't even slip up anywhere at Jordan-Hare Stadium. So setting the bar at 7.5 seems a bit high for me, considering this team wasn't all that great last year, still has a handful of questions. I'm not sure they're going to be that much better uh, in year two under Hugh Freeze. Something to kind of watch out for there. That's an interesting mark. Auburn always having very high expectations, but can they reach them? Oklahoma, 7.5 might seem kind of low for a team that is expected to challenge in the SEC this year. But the Sooners have a very difficult schedule. They have questions up front on the offensive line. They've got new quarterback. So a lot of changes coming their way for the Sooners. 
First SEC game is at home against Tennessee. Of course, they will play Texas in Dallas. Then they've got to go to Ole Miss, to Missouri, and back-to-back games at the end of the year against Alabama in a road game at LSU. So a very, very difficult game a uh, year for the Sooners. Again, Oklahoma fans want to believe they're going to be an SEC title contender in year one. Maybe they can be, but with all the new pieces they've got and this difficult of a schedule, there's not much room for error. Texas will be extremely tough. A road game at Ole Miss is extremely tough. Missouri is extremely I mean, it's such a difficult schedule. And life in the SEC for Oklahoma and Texas is going to be so much different than it was in the Big 12. Going a little quicker here. Kentucky, 6.5. The Wildcats, I really think, can be favored in six games. If you look at their schedule as a whole, and we'll break these down deeper in detail in a few weeks, but I think they can be favored in six games, which means they just need to pull off one upset. Georgia, at Ole Miss, at Florida, at Tennessee, at Texas. A very difficult road slate. Many of those games the Wildcats will not be favored in. So can they pull off an upset maybe against Louisville? Maybe they're favored against Louisville. Uh, Can they pull off the win uh, at Florida, who might not be all that great this year? So a lot of questions for Kentucky. Mark Stoops doing a great job keeping this team as a perennial bowl team, but a true SEC contender this year is just not in the cards. But a bowl team, yes. Arkansas. Five and a half. Some books have them down now at four and a half. Look, you're going to know, kind of like A&M, you're going to know what Arkansas is capable of after their week two matchup at Oklahoma State. How they fare against the reigning Big 12 runner-up uh, will kind of show what the season will be for Arkansas and their new offensive coordinator and Bobby Petrino. It's going to be a fun year for Arkansas regardless just because of that storyline alone. But they've got a brutal schedule. At Oklahoma State, they got to go to Auburn. They've got a great home slate. Getting to host Tennessee, host LSU, host Ole Miss, host Texas. So if the Razorbacks can take care of business at home, they will hit their over. And I'm not saying winning all of those games. I I see probably three surefire victories on their schedule. Where can they find two other wins? Where can you find two conference wins? Maybe Mississippi State? Where's one more? They've got to find it, and they're more likely to do it at home than they are to do it on the road. They've got to find a way to sneak a win in there. But for Arkansas, a bowl appearance is what they need. Hitting the over, getting to five wins, getting to, you know, isn't all that great. Getting to six is what they've got to do. It's going to be very hard to do, though. Florida, one of the most difficult schedules in the country, maybe the most difficult schedule in the country. 11 games against Power 4 opponents. They open the season against Miami. They have a non-conference game against UCF. So playing in state schools, very, very cool. This is a team, though, that has a brutal month of November. Georgia, at Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and at Florida State. Very well could lose all five of those games in the month of November. That automatically puts them at the best seven and five. They're over or they're over under five and a half wins. Some have them down at four and a half. Florida guys, I don't know if they're gonna go bowling this year. They're gonna have to wake up and find a lot. Very disappointing season in 2023. Not a lot's changed roster-wise this year. Billy Napier recruiting well, but I'm not feeling too confident about the Gators this year. Very low total. Some say that's shocking. I say not really when you look at the schedule. South Carolina, 5-7 and seven last year, set at 5.5. LSU, Ole Miss, at Alabama, at Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Bama, Oklahoma, and three consecutive games for the Gamecocks. Again, this is, this is a team that has a very brutal schedule, kind of like Arkansas, kind of like Florida, and I'm not sure they can get to the postseason. But getting there would just be good enough. That is, to me, an ex- a successful year for South Carolina if they can just get to the postseason. Mississippi State set at four and a half. This is a team that could be three and oh in year one under Jeff Levy, could start three and oh. They have a game against UMass later on, could get them to four wins. Where can they get one more win? Just one conference win could get Mississippi State over the hump and hit their over, could get them to five wins. But where is it going to come against? Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Missouri, Ole Miss, going to be underdogs in all of those games. Probably going to go through some growing pains in Starkville for the Bulldogs this season. And then finally, Vanderbilt set at two and a half. Are we surprised? No. Look, if you beat Alcorn State, Georgia State, and Ball State, you hit the over. That's what you got to do. Win your non-conference games. Alcorn State, Georgia State, Ball State, you've hit the over. You slip up in one of those, they're probably hitting the under. They're not beating Virginia Tech in the season opener, and they might not win a conference game this year. Vanderbilt, going to be a little more competitive, but not enough to get the wins. Win those three games that we mentioned, though. They're going to hit the over. If you don't, I don't feel confident about it. So there you go, guys. Those are the SEC win totals. That's what they're set at. We kind of broke down the schedules in a little bit deeper detail. We're going to do a deeper dive with our predictions for all of these games and all of these teams coming your way here in just a few weeks, which is all the more reason to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our website, thegridironexpert.com, our expert picks. 
Do not miss out on the opportunity to sign up today. The earlier you sign up, the earlier you get access to that newsletter. So go check it out. Sign up. Become a member of our GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah.